Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So one of my viewers asked a question about some items they have around the house and if they are worth anything as scrap metal. Behind me I have a number of items I've been collecting for this video. I've taken them out of my pantry, some out of my bathroom, some out of my garage. Some of them actually have products still in them and I'm just using them for this video and educational purposes. But what I want to do is not only talk about the different materials they're made of and the prices, but which ones are accepted at a scrapyard and which ones are not. So here we go. The first one I want to talk about are aluminum pie plates, aluminum trays. They come in different sizes, different colors, and these are accepted at a scrapyard. These aluminum trays I can get about 40 to 45 cents a pound. They're not heavy but you definitely find them a lot, especially in my house, because I love to eat pie. Um, you do find them sometimes that have, for example, those McCain uh, cakes, have a black outer color, inside is a gold color. You do want to make sure that they are clean when you bring them to a scrapyard. If there is a lot of pie filling or uh, garbage or waste inside of them, the scrapyard will either penalize you or not accept it at all. As well, it's definitely not a good idea for you to keep them with food in them anyway if you're storing them up because they do attract, um, you know, raccoons and other animals. So you do want to make sure you wash them, um, but they are accepted at a scrapyard. Easy to recognize, um, as you can see, put a magnet to it. Aluminum is non-magnetic. Uh, and as I said, 40 to 45 cents a pound, uh, it all adds up. So aluminum pie plates, aluminum trays, um, storage containers, that is one category, and this will go into clean aluminum. Pop cans are another common item. Sometimes you will find bags of them uh, on garbage days. Sometimes people collect them for different um, charities. And right now, aluminum pop cans are actually going for an all-time high price. Currently in London, Ontario, they're $1.12 a pound, which is amazing. Two years ago, at this time, they were only going for about 45 to 60 cents a pound, so a huge increase. It's a great thing to collect. Um, and if you're like myself, who loves his buble or buble, whatever the pronunciation, um, you know, they're easy to store up. And while I'm on this topic, I do want to answer the question, how many pop cans does it take to make a pound? I have a scale uh, beside me here. I just weighed, it took 34 pop cans to make a pound. So easy to store up, as you can see, I just crushed them down. I have a couple bags of them and I will bring them in once I have uh, a truckload of them. So aluminum cans, uh, definitely a great item. You do wanna make sure there are cans, uh, for example, coconut water or different brands that I've seen or different products that are actually not aluminum. So. These ones you can definitely tell by the weight, uh, magnet, aluminum again doesn't stick. Some of the ones like the coconut ones, they are heavier, uh, harder to squeeze, and you put a magnet to it, they do stick to it, so those are going to be tin cans. So you do have to be careful, you don't want to mix them together because if you do, you're going to get penalized for a dirty load. Um, and you also want to make sure that you separate them from your aluminum pie plates. Pop cans are their own category at a scrapyard. So $1.12 right now in London, Ontario, great thing to collect um, and a common thing you'll find. Another item that you commonly find are tin cans. Winter right now in Canada, a lot of people are eating soup, like my family. I love my clam chowder. Uh, my kids love their alphagetti. I find it not delicious, but hey, to each their own. Tin cans come in tuna cans, for example. A lot of people have tin cans from, if they have a pet, you know, different cat containers. I've seen some people bring in bags of dog food tin cans, you know, um, that they have a couple big dogs. Easy thing to store up. Uh, just to show you how much these weigh, I've got three cans here, obviously different sizes. I have my scale. Just these three cans alone. I'll put one more on. There's five ounces right there. Eight ounces right there, just in these cans right here. There's four cans. Uh, right now, tin is going for 10 to 13 cents a pound. This too is an amazing price. It has continued to stay at this price. I will throw this tin in with all my other tin 
that I have from the microwave shells, um, different uh, building things that I find on job sites. Um, you know, so great item to have to store and to bring in. As you can see, I do crush them down so it doesn't take up a lot of space. You do want to make sure you also rinse these out as well, not only for the smell, but also you don't want to attract animals. Um, and as well, if they have things like I've seen people bring them in that have their grease inside of those, scrap yards are going to look at this and especially if they are going through the material, they will definitely penalize you or they will take some of it and refuse to take it. So you definitely want to be careful and cautious as well. Be respectful to the scrap yard workers. Um, so tin cans. While I'm on the topic of tin cans, there are some tin cans that are not completely tin. As you can see here, this soup container has all tin. This Tim Hortons container, this is the hot chocolate tin. There is no tin going down the sides here. The only tin is off the rim and on the bottom. This container is actually cardboard. And scrap yards are not going to say anything if you throw a couple of these in there. But if I just brought a load of these, scrap yards are probably going to give me four to five cents a pound for this because there is a lot of non-metal on here, which obviously goes for the weight. So you do have to be careful of that. A couple would be okay. Uh, and especially now with the price being so high, scrap yards are starting to become more picky. Um, before they wouldn't care about as much plastic and, and different waste that was on the product. So again, it depends on how much you have, how much you weight uh, in total that you bring in, um, as well, the people working at the yard. So there is our differences with tin cans. While I'm on the topic of tin cans, one of the items that you definitely will have around your house are paint cans. I just called the scrap yard yesterday and asked them about paint cans. They will accept paint cans as long as they are empty. Um, if I brought this one in, I don't want to open it because this still has about this much paint in it. They will not accept this obviously because the paint. Once the paint is used up, uh, they will accept these. Um, so that is definitely a good thing. So these would be counted as tin, aerosol or spray, cane, spray paint cans, however, are not accepted. Not only are they full of paint, they are also highly flammable um, and definitely pose a risk uh, because of the pressure inside of them. So paint, spray paint cans are not accepted. Um, you could call around. Uh, the one I talked to said no, uh, but again, there are different rules and different laws, different depending on country or state or scrapyard. Um, so if you have a lot of them, you can check, but unfortunately, here, where I live, this unfortunately is just gonna go into the garbage. Um, even though if I put a magnet to it, you can see it does stick. So these are not accepted at the scrapyard in London. I have a whole bunch of other cans here. You can see I've got a whipped cream can. This is tin. I've got a shaving cream can, tin. I've got an air freshener. Uh, got a, what is this here, a cooking spray. Uh, these are all tin. This pile, however, if I put a magnet to them, this is hairspray, axe. These are non-magnetic. There are aerosol and different spray cans that are made from aluminum. So the thing about these is I have seen people, and I am borrowing this from uh, Moose Scrapper. Moose Scrapper will actually take off the plastic from these, uh, the Febreze containers. He, he did a video on that, taking out the plastic. In my opinion, they are not worth it. This can only weighs two ounces. Um, as you can see, there is a warning on here that says may explode if heated. And in my opinion, they're not worth the risk to take apart for you know the two pennies that they're worth or a penny that they're worth. Um, I do also see some people throw these into the uh, recycle and because they have the plastic top on them, um, usually they are thrown out at the processing facility, unfortunately because of the plastic inside, uh, as well as uh, the danger with the um, explosive label on it. Uh, but what I do want to do is, for this experiment, I am going to show you how to take this one apart. And again, I am taking this from Moose Scrapper, uh, who did it with a Febreze container. This is a, a cupcake icing one. The first thing you do want to make sure 
is that you release the pressure in this. If it is an aerosol, you do want to make sure you no longer hear the hiss. Okay, so I don't hear the hiss anymore. And you will also know that the pressure inside is gone because you will be able to, as you can see, squeeze the can. So there I've dented the can. If I tried it with this hairspray container, this still has stuff in it. Again, I borrowed it from my wife. Um, I cannot squeeze this can, okay? So you do wanna make sure that you take out the um, air, the spray or the pressure, okay? The next thing you wanna do is actually poke a hole in it. So I am gonna do that for this video and educational purposes. Again, I do not do this for any other aerosol cans. Uh, I just, like I said, throw them into my recyclable. Uh, but I am gonna do this, all I'm gonna do is puncture a hole in it, just use a hammer. Oh, and there was a little bit of still left over, but you can see there is the hole in it. Um, again, thank goodness this was not, uh, you know, a hairspray container or something. Uh, the other thing you have to make sure is you can see there is a lip, and this lip is actually going to be magnetic. So if I was to throw this into my aluminum as is, I'm not going to get aluminum price for this because of the um, tip. So I do have to take that off. And all I'm going to use is actually a pair of side cutters and just pull it up. Okay, it's just crimped on there. All right, so it's coming off right now. It's just, again, as you can see, for a couple pennies, in my opinion, definitely not worth the risk or the time or energy, all right? But it will come off once I hopefully crimp this off. There we go, the top's off. So there it is. The rest of this is now going to be, if I put a magnet to it, aluminum, okay? And again, there is unfortunately a little bit of icing still in here. I don't even think this would be worth, you know, my um, the weight in this. They might look at this, especially if they see it, realize there's that icing in there and they might just give me nothing for it. So in my opinion, again, aerosol cans that are aluminum, not worth your time, energy, or safety. Um, and like I said, I would just throw them into, unfortunately, the garbage because they are not recyclable as well. Okay, the tin ones again, whipped cream one. This one, it is uh, aluminum. There is no more, um, as you can hear, pressure in this. I do throw these into my tin, okay? So these are okay, uh, especially if it's food products. Um, but the aluminum ones, again, as I said, do not bring those into the scrapyard. It is because they will not accept them. Last one I want to talk about are batteries. Batteries, believe it or not, you will find sometimes people that throw them into blue boxes. Batteries are not recyclable at, uh, in a blue box. However, they are accepted at scrapyards. Uh, and there are different categories. These ones, as you can see here, these are all household batteries. These are cur currently going for 10 cents a pound uh, in London, Ontario, uh, because of the lead inside of them. There is a separate category for lawnmower batteries and bigger batteries, uh, car batteries. But these ones, like I said, this topic is common things you have in your house. As you can see, I store them up in containers like this. I find loads of them from scrapping. Um, sometimes I will find, you know, a couple of remote controls that have them in there or different, um, you know, uh, game consoles or whatever that have different batteries and different sizes. So 10 cents a pound. There's uh, four pounds right here. So I just store them up. The other nice thing about storing them up in a container is sometimes they will leak and you definitely don't want that on your garage floor or, you know, uh, messing up your stuff. So nice container here. The little batteries like this that you will find, some scrapyards will not take these. The scrapyard that I go to in London, Ontario that take these will not take these. However, the scrapyard that I go to in Sarnia will accept these. So you do wanna make sure you separate them. You do wanna make sure you uh, call your scrapyard to make sure or to find out. Um, so again, as you can see there, there is a number of these. We definitely wanna make sure these don't go into the uh, landfills or the water systems. So definitely make sure that we recycle them properly um, and safely. 
Um, so again, a lot of different items. You have, like I said, I'm sure there's a lot more that I have, but common ones that we have, again, like I said, batteries, uh, aluminum pie plates. Uh, while I'm on the topic also with aluminum, someone asked me about aluminum foil. Aluminum foil, yes, it's aluminum, but again, if it has a lot of residual on it, or you know, sometimes when you're making a salmon or something, there's a lot of uh, fish guts on it, scrap yards are not going to take it if it is heavily garbage. So, in my opinion, unfortunately, it's better to go into the garbage. Uh, you definitely don't want to put it into your blue box because it not only stinks, but it's going to end up in the garbage at a, at a, at a uh, recycling process facility anyway because there's too much residual on it and not enough aluminum. So hopefully this answered the question. Pop cans, tin cans, you know, uh, different cans you have around the house that we use every day, um, you know, some prices. Please continue with those comments and questions. I enjoy answering them. I try my best with answering them. Uh, love the feedback that I'm getting. Hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully you found this informative. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.